Hello everyone, this is Joe Waxman, and in this video I want to look at the chart of famous writer and poet Edgar Allan Poe. Guys, before I begin, don't forget to hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps me out a lot. I share my screen. Alrighty, Edgar Allan Poe, uh, he lived in Philadelphia, by the way, I've seen his house, there's kind of, there's a mural dedicated to him in uh, Northern Liberties, part of Philadelphia. Uh, he was born in Boston, but he lived in Philadelphia for a while, and Baltimore, and New York. In any case, um, I should, I should make it known that uh, his ascendant is almost exactly conjunct mine same same sign and very close to mine also my north node and uranus are also in the first house in scorpio my uranus is conjunct my ascendant but eerily similar uh nothing else is really that similar but uh that is uh his son and mercury are in capricorn in the third house sun is conjunct uh, Mercury, but not just conjunct, we call this Kazemi because it's the same exact degree, less than 17 minutes apart. Uh, and Kazemi is considered different than combust. When a planet is close to the sun, it's considered combust. When it's exactly the same degree, it's considered Kazemi. Kazemi means in the heart of, the heart of the, in the heart of the sun. And it's supposed to... Um, be very beneficial, whereas combust is not. Uh, Mercury, obviously, is very appropriate for a writer, and so is third house. Uh, and the the Kazemi aspect is uh, meant to produce uh, very positive results, right? And we can see that, obviously, because he's a renowned writer. In fact, uh, he's a he's one of the he's considered uh, an originator of uh, the horror theme and the dark dark themes of um, I guess the I guess the overall horror genre. Although I don't think all of his pieces are in horror, just dark themes in general. Uh, the detective novel as well, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later. Some of the his influences, but third house, very appropriate for a writer. Also Capricorn, you know, just being earth sign, very grounded, solid, practical, right? Uh, that's that's excellent for the, the structural aspects of the writing. You know, it's not all creativity, but if we look to his moon, then we have, you know, this whole stellium, here in, in, in Pisces, in the fifth house, very creative, right? Fifth house and Pisces together is an extremely creative combination. And there's a whole stellium there. Uh, we have moon exactly conjunct Venus, uh, Pluto. Pluto is the dark element here. Well, not only that, we have the, also Scorpio, so double, doubly that. Well, triply. I mean, yeah, I mean, not even if you look at Capricorn, Capricorn can be dark, right? Capricorn can be quite it's it's Capricorn is very goal oriented, materialistic, but it has it has a potentially dark quality. Um, potentially. It depends on other things, on other factors, but it can go into the dark places. Uh, so can Pisces and so can Pluto, right? Moon in Pisces is just generally very creative. Venus in Pisces is exalted. Jupiter in Pisces is dom in domicile. I forgot to, I'm going to pull up his, um, let's pin this right now. Um, and didn't even look at this. Um, all his planets, look at that. All his planets are direct. Isn't that interesting? 
except for the nodes, which are always moving retrograde, so that's normal. Um, Venus and Jupiter are his two strongest planets. Let me just check something. Uh, Mars is his slowest planet. And just if you want to know which planets are going to be fast or slow, well, besides Jupiter and Venus, if you look to the sun, then you look which planets are trying the sun or near trine or opposite. Uh, opposite or, or you know, beyond the trine, in you know, in between like the two trines, which, okay, Capricorn, it would be um, the end of Taurus and the end of uh, Virgo. In between that, there's going to be, there's going to be um, retrograde but around the, this area, they can be stationary. And then, so you just want to look to see, I mean, you can check the speeds of any planet around there just to make sure. Yeah, it's still, it's 41 days away, so that's not that slow. All right, I just wanted to check. But uh, yeah, so all these planets are direct which is interesting. It generally creates a lot of smoothness, I've noticed. Like the person has no opposition. So even though it's, he has a very dark themed chart, it's very smooth and flowing because nothing is going against the grain. Obviously the nodes are always gonna be retrograde, so. I mean, you can have, if you're using true nodes, you can have direct nodes, but they're generally, I mean, it's, they're only direct for a very short period of time and um, their overall movement is retrograde. Any case. Uh, all right. Okay, so a whole, a whole stellium in Pisces and, and then moon Pluto is very, that's very dark, very heavy. Uh, influencing, Pluto is very much influencing his, his belief system his faith, his optimism, even though Jupiter is in good dignity, uh, he's still, I mean, the, the conjunct with Pluto with the moon, I mean, it's that's difficult because Pluto is going to be very difficult. It's affecting his faith, his optimism. By the way, he was an alcoholic, right? Uh, I've not heard that he was into any other substances, but I would not be surprised if he was. And he died young. But before he died, he did have a very uh, uh, strong literary career. He wrote The Raven, which is mo his most famous poem, but he also wrote other short stories and novels, which were, if not incredibly um, successful themselves, were incredibly influential with other uh, famous writers. So Edgar Allan Poe was sort of like the writer's writer or one of a, a writer's writer, not the writer's writer, a writer's writer. In other words, that even though he wasn't extremely successful on his own, other famous authors found tremendous inspiration within his writing. Um, and you can see that particularly with Uranus conjunct the North Node in the first house, showing that he was a, a a revolutionary as far as his his work goes because Uranus is a you know it's not a follower Uranus is going to be a groundbreaker it's going to be an originator it's going to be somebody who completely you know paves their own way uh you know forward because it's, it's just not following anything it's, it's doing its own thing right and that's very rare and it's <clears throat> and because of that it's going to only, only usually Uranus type individuals are not that appreciated by the masses because it's too far out there for them, but it's appreciated by other people within who, who have the know because it's like Uranus is the grandfather. So you need the father to recognize the father. You know, it's it's a little far out there for, for most people to 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 appreciate or relate to. You know, you're not gonna get people reading Edgar Allan Poe's work. In, in mass and just being like, wow, this is great. I mean, maybe now because he's so far removed, but however, he was, he did make a name for himself even in his life. And he uh, was, was a literary critic and he wrote for magazines and whatnot. 
and things of that nature. Um, he had a difficult youth. His father abandoned him early and his mother died young. And we can see that with Chiron conjunct the IC in Aquarius with this square from the nodes and also Uranus, right? And so that signifies some very unusual, difficult beginnings. Um, square from Uranus in Scorpio is pretty, pretty heavy, right? Because Uranus in Scorpio kind of represents sudden death, right? And so guys, if I, if I just disappear one day, it'll be because I died suddenly. I'm not trying to be morbid or anything, but the chart says what it, a chart says, you know, and if you have a chart that looks like this, you can, you might be, you might just one day disappear. Um, especially if there are squares to it. I, you know, anyway. Uh, yeah, this is sudden death. His mother died suddenly uh, from, not sure why, can't remember why, his father left. And then he was, he grew up with his, um, I don't know, somebody named Alan, somebody with the last name Alan. So he was Edgar Poe, grew up with the Alan, um, then went into the military, interestingly enough. Uh, but that didn't last long. And then he decided to be a writer and a poet. He was a poor writer and a poet. And then he married his 13 year old cousin, which is, <laughs> he was 26, she was 13. It's also first cousin. So it's like incest and pedophilia all at once, all at once. So, I mean, so seventh Lord in fifth house, fifth house is children. So when fifth and seventh, come together well you can put those two together children and marriage i mean hey in any case uh venus is exalted so at least there's that i mean there you know um very there's a lot of creativity right but the pluto pluto is the one negativity i mean all these all these rest venus Moon and Jupiter are excellent in Jupiter. I mean, Venus, Moon is not excellent. In, moon in, in, in Pisces is is um, very creative. All of these are very creative in Pisces. Uh, but Jupiter is in domicile. Venus is exalted. And Pluto brings in the very dark element, right? As does Scorpio. Uh, Ascendant Lord Venus. Uh, Son of Lord Mars, sorry, is in the sign of Venus in the 12th house, clearly in the 12th, 12th house of creativity, foreign lands, um, loss, and um, uh, dissolution. So, you know, there's another element of uh, that, you know, we could look to for, for his alcohol abuse, but also his creativity. Right, and then the Venus is dispositing it in the fifth house, it exalted, conjunct the moon, exactly, conjunct the moon. So that's quite prominent. Um, yeah, his south node is in is in Taurus, so that we can see that if the south node is in the seventh house, that shows that there's going to be loss. There's going to be loss of partnership, right? Um, basically same thing happened to me. Uh, my girlfriend died, Well, she wasn't my girlfriend at the time, but she left me first. But I mean, it's a similar theme, like loss of partnership. And then you have to, with North Node in the first house, especially in Scorpio, that's not an easy combination because then you have to be alone with Scorpio here, right? Which is like deep and intense and desirous and, you know, Especially, I mean, if you're alone with Scorpio with Uranus, that's even more difficult. That's not a not a great combination. I mean, good for some things, but not an easy combination, for sure. And then if you have other elements like Moon conjunct Pluto and Jupiter conjunct Pluto and Venus conjunct Pluto, uh, that's really, really difficult and heavy. Uh, 
Neptune. Neptune's in Sagittarius. Crazy. Because Neptune is in Sagittarius in my chart, too. Um, Pluto is in, not in, Pluto is in Libra, but um, this is like a repeat of when I was born, almost. In any case, uh, Neptune... Neptune and Sagittarius is, well, Neptune in the second house is not very good. Neither is Saturn in the second house. It does show poverty because Neptune shows loss. Saturn shows restriction. And he grew up, he was poor. He, like, he was paid, like, $9 for the Raven. Like, he was just poor his whole life. Never made much money at all. Um, let's see, Neptune has a light square to Venus and Moon. Um, that definitely makes him delusional, more creative, but Neptune will bring out the, the alcohol and the, and the dependency, the drugs much more so, excuse me. Uh, Saturn has a light sextile. It's out of sign, but it's still somewhat sextile than the sun and, and, um, Mercury Kazemi in that sign, same sign. Other than that, Saturn really doesn't have any aspects. Um, but that's not bad because Saturn rules uh, Capricorn. <clears throat> if he would have lived long enough, then he could have had sustained income because Saturn kind of sustains and endures. So he could have he could have built up enough, you know, um, energy to to have a sustained income here a sustained resource but that didn't happen he was always poor um yeah this the square is not very good from neptune not a very easy chart but you can see some very strong elements of writing and creativity and if he could just have had endured that well, Chiron also, uh, Chiron does have to do with fiction, science fiction, um, being an outcast, being being strange and weird, definitely all those things, right? And fourth house um, relates to home, childhood, uh, real estate, and he was always moving. He never had a stable home. Uh, so, very troubled life. Um, North Node conjunct Uranus definitely indicates genius, um, especially in the first house and in Scorpio. Um, brilliance, genius, originality, independence of mind and thought. And before I go on, I want to pull up his Wikipedia because one of the most sorry, um, prominent things are his influences because it wasn't so much, you know, on face value of his work as it was how he influenced other people. That's really where, it, and that's what I was saying. It's it's the, the other artists and writers who picked up on Edgar Allan Poe's genius that, that really makes him noteworthy. He was, like I said, he was a writer's writer. Uh, the most discriminating philosophical and fearless critic upon imaginative works who has written in America. Yeah, and uh, rhetorically that he used pruss prussic acid instead of ink for his critics. Poe's caustic reviews earned him the reputation of being a tomahawk tomahawk man meaning that he was incredibly critical fearlessly critical which i can understand uh boston's claim he was <laughs> critical of henry wadsworth longfellow um heresy of the didact of the didactic writing poetry that was preachy derivative and thematically plagiarized and that he correctly predicted that his poetry would decline. 
we would grant him high qualities, but deny him the future, meaning that he was popular then, but not in that he wouldn't be in the future. Um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who wrote um, Sherlock Holmes, each of Poe's detective stories is a route from which a whole literature has developed. I praise. Where was the detective story until Poe preached the breath of life into it? Question mark. Um, Jules Verne, Poe's novel, novel narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym. Um, H.G. Wells, Pym tells what a very intelligent mind could imagine about the South Pole region, blah, blah, blah. One of the greatest novels ever written in the English language, it's high praise, and noted its influences on later authors such as Doyle, blah, 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 blah. Poor author and historian H.P. Lovecraft, he's one of the original greats. Heavily influenced by Poe's horror tales, dedicating an entire section of his long essay, Supernatural Horror and Literature, to his influence in the genre. Okay. Um, skipping around a little bit. Don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, William Butler Lates, Yates, uh, critical. Vulgar, uh, Raven, Emerson, Raven, I see nothing in it. But um, Poe was very critical of transcendentalism. So he was critical of Emerson, which I think Emerson was part of the transcendentalist movie. movement. Huxley was critical. Um, but anyway, so some were critical, but many were influenced. Alfred Hitchcock once said, is because I liked Edgar Allan Poe's stories so much that I began to make suspense films. So you can see that people who were much more, um, you know, I'm not very much of a horror fan myself, but I like to give credit where credit is due. And Poe was one of the originators. Let's look at his draconic chart. Okay. I'm seeing Capricorn, which is the third house for him, third cusp, right? Fifth house and more fifth house elements with this uh, Mars and Ascendant, uh, North Node and Uranus and Aries, uh, sixth house influence, so health, Saturn and Neptune, right? He died of mysterious causes. Mys mysteries is Neptune, right? Hidden things, mysterious illness, that's Neptune. Of course, it was probably related to alcohol, but uh, still, they don't know the exact cause. Saturn in the sixth definitely causes Ill poor health, right? Uh, Sun and Mercury in Gemini for a writer. That's, I mean, couldn't ask for a better, better symbolism there. I mean, it's draconic. Third house, you know, Gemini, of course. All of these planets in, in um, Leo, you know, conjuncting the, the MC, I mean, extremely appropriate for a famous writer. Leo, we see Leo in a lot of writers, right? And a lot of artists in general for the creativity aspect and for fame, notoriety, and see, right? Of course. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I mean, that's very, very prominent, very appropriate for somebody such as Poe. You know, the, the, the darkness is coming from his natal chart, but we can see very strong writing elements and creative elements in the draconic as well, as well as the health issue. Uh, just out of curiosity, this is, this is the time of his death. So Jupiter and Venus are very poor dignity opposite his natal Jupiter. Um, and Venus, uh, North Node also in uh, uh, Virgo opposite um, 
this fifth house stellium planets planets in the sixth house uh uranus and pluto also very bad for health uranus and pluto together mean sudden death uh in the sixth house is the house of health all right um what else can we look to South node and Neptune and Pisces. That's just loss. This loss. Loss and loss. I mean, both of them. Neptune, South node and Neptune is, uh, so, sorry, Pisces. South node and Pisces, Neptune and Pisces is a very, um, negative com combination for, I mean, that's going to be generational. That's going to affect everyone, but, um, you know, it's moving into his this whole stellium here. Anyway. Uh, what else did I want to look at? We can, we can just briefly look at the nodes. Okay, north node of Chiron right on the ascending. Chiron relating to the, the, the fiction, the science fiction, the, the oddity, the, the wounded reject, the oddball, the weirdo, like all of these things. Science, science fiction. And by the way, guys, like I'm just I'm just I'm rather blunt with my descriptions of things and critical, but I in no way mean offense or negativity because I'm always talking about you know things that everybody has I have I have Chiron in my chart it's in my seventh house so you know it directly affects me relates to me too so I'm, I'm always speaking about myself whenever I criticize you know planets and houses and things of that nature uh I didn't even look at this so I'm just bear with me Moving first significant south node and Neptune conjunct Chiron. So that's very, again, very significant for the writing, for the science fiction, because Neptune rules creativity, imagination. And this is square also, square to the nodes. So it's very significant for him. Shows it's something that kind of he needs to meet. It's part of his destiny. Uh, and um pluto conjunct the north node of venus that's just i mean this is Pisces. this is just adding to his creativity right venus and then the north node of venus both exalted in pisces um we're getting the mars node in, in aries and the south node of chiron so that's picking up on health issues mars being his ascendant lord And there's these, well, this is significant because it's conjunct the MC, uh, north node of, of uh, Neptune in Leo. So that's, again, very creative career, but these are not making any aspects to planets or directly. So just gonna ignore them. So that's pretty much it for Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, yeah, I touched on everything. Didn't do all the, the houses. I mean, sun's ruling the 10th house and the third house. So for writing, obviously, I mean, sun will naturally have a strong, you know, relationship to career be in any case, because uh, it just does. Well, Saturn, Saturn's dispositive by Jupiter in the fifth, right? Um, so, yeah, Mars is ruling the sixth house of health in the 12th, so that's loss, we can see that there as well. Oh yeah, so about his wife, he married the 13-year-old cousin, and then she died, very, not that long after, she died, uh, I think, well, maybe like 10 years later, but I guess they were married for 10 years, um, 
But yeah, that's the south node in the seventh house. And then Venus also conjunct Pluto along with Moon. Uh, yeah. All right. I think that's pretty much it, guys. Excuse me. Don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Book a reading with me. Uh, go to my website, macroastrology.com. Or you can uh, email me directly at macrogoldmachine at yahoo.com. Leave a comment if you like, and I will see you again soon. Okay, thanks. Bye.